five ways to find and keep the best relationship for you. I'm Dr. Trish Lee, cognitive neuroscientist and sex addiction recovery coach. Today is my 20th wedding anniversary. Yes, applause, please. Anybody who has been married for any amount of time, but especially for 20 years plus, you know that marriage is not for the faint of heart. I just got done reading Will Smith's book, and in the end, the very end of the book, he says the exact same thing. Being married is the most difficult thing in the entire world, but it's also the best learning lab also. You can learn a truckload about yourself, about life, and how to be the best version of yourself by being in a good marriage or partnership. So let's dig in. Number one is find and keep your true authentic self. So, so many people don't bring that authentic version into a relationship. They bring in a seemingly shinier version or a false version of themselves. Now, that's not your fault. So many of us have to, all of us basically, have to develop these masks to get through society. And if you develop a mask and you put it on and you keep it on too long, you identify with that persona. And when you do that, it's very difficult to build intimacy and to be vulnerable with your partner. And to be able to have a great relationship, you have to be able to take that mask off when you get home. And you've heard me talk about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in these videos before. Those are both masks. Those are not the true authentic version of yourself. Dr. Jekyll is the side that you present to the world. Mr. Hyde is the side that watches porn in the dark. And underneath that is you, real you, little you. So think of yourself when you were young. What did you love to do? What lit your heart up? What made you jazzed up about getting out of bed in the morning? Do more of that in your life and share those pieces with your partner so that you can have a real relationship. Okay, which leads us to number two support your partner. And so if you and your partner are supporting each other, you will be able to be the true version of yourself and that will be celebrated, not shamed. And we have to take shame out of the equation. So of course we have to scoot porn out of the picture because it creates and perpetuates shame. But when it's out of the picture and you're your true self, that should be celebrated. Now note, note to self is that celebrate does not mean fix or fix for. So you're not to fix your partner and your partner shouldn't be fixing you because guess what? You're perfect in every way. There is nothing to fix. Once porn's out of the picture, of course. There's nothing to fix. You're whole, you're healed. If you figure out who you truly are and you go into the world as that version on purpose in your work, in your relationships, and in your hobbies, there's nothing to fix. So you don't need to be fixed. And you don't have to have things fixed for you either. This is a true story. My husband just, uh, I'm going to a retreat that he went to and he just asked me if I had received the materials for before the retreat. I'm not going for a few months still. And I said, no, I haven't gotten them yet. And he whips out his phone. He's about to email the people. And he goes, what email address do you want them sent to? And I, I said, I thought it was funny. I said, have them sent to none of your effing business at gmail.com. <laughs> He's like, oh, you're funny. I'm like, dude, I got this. I can handle this. If I want those materials, I'm absolutely capable of getting those materials for myself. So you don't have to fix your partner and you don't have to fix things for them. You support them in it. So he could have said, which he did later, actually. He said, I'd really love to talk with you about what you learned in that pre-program. So maybe you could get it soon so we could spend some time talking. Now I want to get those materials because he and I talking about existential um, material is one of my favorite things to do. Now I'm inspired to do it, but he didn't have to fix that for me. He can support me in that journey and it's going to make a huge difference. Okay, so support leads to balance. Balance is you offset each other's quirks. And if you've heard me talk about the personality test, the Enneagram personality test before, different personality types really can um, accent and help encourage other personality types. So I'm a five, my husband's an eight. Fives and eights are one of the perfect combinations or, you know, quote unquote, perfect combinations because eights are more in their body. Fives are more in their heads. 
And so my husband likes to play a lot in the world and I like to be in my head cerebrally playing. So what we do for each other is I pull him into his head more and he pulls me out into my body and into the world more. And it's a really beautiful combination of balance. And when we first met, you know, I'd work these really long days and then he would he would want to play. And then what he would do is he started working more and getting more on purpose in his work because I inspired him in that direction. And now we both work hard and play hard. True story. When we first met, he literally made a pro and con list about dating me. The pros. These are the pros. That I'm smart. That I'm funny. That I like physical intimacy. Yes, that was on the list and it was phrased differently. That I like to party. That was on the list because I do enjoy having a good time. That I like to work out because I've always liked to work out and exercise and nutrition's always been important to me. And then I'm like, what was on the con list? I was trying to think of this. What was on the con list? The con list was he was coming out of a relationship or he had ended a relationship. And so he was kind of shell-shocked moving into another relationship looking for the cons. And some of those cons surrounded the initial idea of finding yourself and being willing to be that self. So he shows up in the relationship with me and I don't want to fix him. I don't want to control him. I just want to have a good time with him and support him. And so the cons were kind of like, I'm not sure if this is going to be like the old relationship. If there are cons that that surround control or that surround changing you. Those are things to communicate about. And communication is really, really important. And we've learned to be much better communicators over the 20 years. And of course, now we co-parent a million children and we have businesses and we've developed strategies to be able to communicate in healthier ways so that we can keep that balance. But moving on to the next one, number four is honesty. So being honest with each other is really, really important. And that's scary. That involves vulnerability. And especially if you've had a secret sex life of pornography, consumption of masturbation or acting out in any other sexual way, being honest, moving forward in your relationship makes it so that you clear the slate. And some of the people I work with, they're amazed that once they become honest and they sometimes they don't even tell everything of the past to their partner, they just get honest moving forward. Their partner changes because you can sense when people aren't telling you the whole story. You can sense when there's things that are happening on the down low or running in the background. Honesty is the way to a beautiful relationship. What we're talking about here is developing an interdependent relationship. And in my relationship, we had to go to work on getting rid of some of the codependent uh, programming and codependent variables or patterns that we had that we learned from our parents. I didn't even know that was a thing until I learned it was a thing. And when I learned, I'm like, dang, I've got to unravel some of this. And what it involved is digging into who we really are and doing the things that we love and supporting each other. That's the special sauce. And when you do that, and when you can be vulnerable and honest, you won't need porn because your life is going to feel so good to you. Radical honesty is the way out. Now, I just said it to my husband. I got a text from my ex. If you're watching, hello. Uh, I got a text and I said to the hubs, I'm like, I've got to tell you something. I just got a text from this ex of mine and a, a person I haven't talked to in decades. And my husband tells me, this is totally not acceptable, by the way, we will be talking about later. He tells me he was down in the photos and he found a picture of his old, old girlfriend from high school, the one that he still thinks about, the one that kind of got away, you know? And he's like, oh yeah, well, I found a picture of her. I'm like, what are you talking about? That's not honesty. You found that picture days ago. I just got this text this very moment. That's how honesty works. And of course I didn't care. And he was one-upping me on the honesty. And, but the point is that I said, did you get an emotional twinge when you saw it? Guess what he said? Why would I want to have the perfect woman in front of me? Good answer. Good answer, hubs. Okay. Which moves us through to number five. What's this whole journey? Why do we even, why do I care? Why do I make these videos? Why do I want to talk to you about these variables? I'll tell you why. It's because number five is love. The number one thing people want in this world is to give love and be loved in return. That's from Moulin Rouge. I stole that line. I have to tell you, if you've seen Moulin Rouge, so good. You got to watch it. But that is the truth. We want to be loved and we want to be able to love other people. 
And if you're guarded, if you're disengaged from your relationship, if you're hiding things, love can't come through. It's being blocked. Intimacy is your ability to share love in different ways. And there's physical intimacy. That's what sex should be. Being physical, touching your partner, being able to have experiential intimacy, being able to share views, being able to have spiritual intimacy, share all of yourself, let all of it, even the ugly parts, let it be seen and appreciated. That's how you get to a place of love. And in these videos, I always say, get on purpose in your life, purpose in your work, in your relationships, in your hobbies. So this is our final thought today. What is the purpose in your relationship or in your relationships? What is the purpose? What is the point? What is the meaning? If you're sucked into a porn habit, it might partially be to get from your partner, to take. And that is not a true purpose. A true purpose is to give to the relationship. And when you're on purpose in your work, you're giving your all to your work. And then your work goes and contributes to to your community, to the world. When you're on purpose in your relationship, you're giving, you're supporting your partner, your, I'll tell you what my purpose is. My purpose is to help my hubs become the best version of himself so he can be happy, he can feel loved, he can give love, and he can be at peace. That is my purpose. And we've gone through hard times getting to that purpose. We've gone through funny times creating that purpose. We've been through happy times. It's not all been rainbows and unicorns, but it's been amazing because we've been able to learn from each other. We've been able to give to each other. We've been able to kick the crap out of each other when we need it and get each other back online so that we can show up in this world as our best version of ourselves. And then the beautiful thing is we're able to pay that forward to our parents in a new way because of the work we're doing together. And absolutely, we've changed it for our children. We're breaking those multi-generational patterns by parenting our kids in a different way, by being on the same team and learning to communicate, be honest, and show up for as the best versions of ourselves. All right, so if you didn't appreciate the thumbnail of Younger Me, hopefully these words will ring true with you. And if you want an amazing relationship, that again, you have to work at and it's the most difficult thing in the world, it is absolutely worth it. So I hope those points help you. And as always, control your brain or it'll control you.